Good morning, dear friends. It is so nice that we could be together for this very few minutes before you begin your day and uh, get into your activities. It is good to silently be in the presence of God and listen to Him. And today's meditation is taken from the book of Job, from the life of Job. There are three questions we are going to deal with. Three very, very important questions that humanity always asked. Uh, these references, these questions are found in chapter 9 of the book of, uh, book of Job, 33 and 34. And then again, chapter 14, verse 14. And third, chapter 19, uh, 25 to 27. Now, I want you to listen to God's testimony about Job. It is found in chapter 1 of the book of Job, verse 8, where God himself testifies concerning Job, saying, There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. What a testimony! And such a righteous man was tempted and tested, which uh, completely ruined him and devastated him. At the end, he understood who God really is and was uh, ashamed of himself, that he spoke out of his ignorance. Once he heard God, he had nothing to say. He was blessed with the healing and with the riches, with the double-fold increase as a reward for remaining faithful and loyal to God throughout his severe testing and uh, at, at that period, covering almost a year. Now, during his discouragement, uh, there, was, there were three friends who came uh, to comfort him, but they were not much of a comfort. And during that discourse and uh, argument with his three friends, he raised three significant questions. All three questions were answered by the cross of Jesus Christ and almost 4,000 years after. And let us uh, meditate on these questions because these are uh, our questions too. Question number one, found in chapter 9 of the book of Job, verses 33 and 34. There we read that, you know, the sufferer begins to feel that uh, the problem of his affliction uh, needs for its solution a mediator between God and man. Without such a mediator, man and God have no common ground to meet. The gulf is too wide that the best in man can never make a bridge to cross over. Job cries out in that desperation, if only there were a mediator who could lay his hand on both of us and understands both natures of God and man, all will be well. That is the conclusion. And this is what Job discovered and this is what God desperately needed, a mediator between him and God. Is there such a person? And if there is, where is he? Who is he? Now we all need him. We need to look for him in the New Testament. And so let us look at John's Gospel chapter 1 verse 18. No one these are the words of Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, 
but God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. Romans chapter 8 verses 26 and 27 says, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our uh, weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with the groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. Now one more verse in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. There it says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all men. Now the verses that we read uh, above, they all talk about the possibility of a man being reconciling with God. And there is a possibility now, ever since Jesus came and uh, uh, as, as a Lamb of God to be a sacrifice for the sins of the entire humanity. And he accomplished it 2,000 years ago. And that was after 2,000 years, uh, Job made this great discovery and his desire to find such a mediator. Remember, my friends, for there is one God and one mediator between this God and man, the man Christ Jesus. That is the answer. And uh, this craving of Job is the craving of the entire human race, all mankind. While uh, Job recognized uh, the need, he could not find the answer. Who is this mediator and how could he find him? The, the cross is the answer. By the cross, God himself in the person of Jesus Christ, reconciled the world unto himself. And thus, God himself met this great need of a man to have a mediator. His own son, Jesus Christ, became the mediator. While hanging on the cross, by his hands and by his feet. He reached out to, with one hand, he reached out to God the Father. And with the other hand, he reached out to humanity and took hold of humanity's hand and brought them together while he was hanging on the cross. So the question and the cravings of Job which he expressed in his book, was met by the person of Jesus Christ who came from heaven, from God. And by his death on the cross, he brought, he, gulf, he, he, he uh, bridged the gulf between God and man. And thus brought man and God together in recon reconciliation. The cross is the answer to that. And the second question has to do with life after death. Job chapter 14 verse 14, where he asked this question, if a man dies, will he live again? Now this question is asked by humanity all the time, everywhere. This is the question that is really bothering humanity today. If a man dies, will he live again? 
and all everywhere it is being asked everyone is asking this question it took several hundred years in other words in nearly 2000 years before this question was answered by the lord jesus christ today mankind knows resurrection is a possibility is there anything too hard for the lord no nothing is too hard for the lord that is the answer that the lord himself gives if god gave us life certainly he restores us to life too no one else has answered this question no religion no religious philosophy or founders but jesus christ answered this question first by raising lazarus from the dead and two others one widow's son in the village of nain and then a 12 year old girl he raised both of them and uh, 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 three of them and then he came for the purpose of giving his own life as a sacrifice for the sins of the entire humanity job 19:25 and 27 somehow job had an enlightenment in a moment of uh, uh, of of a revelation he said this in chapter 19 of job verses 25 and 27 job's certainty i know he says it is an emphatic i know i know my redeemer lives my own i shall see him there are three things about this redeemer he is a divine number 2 he is personal and number 3 he is living and job then went on to say my own flesh and eyes shall see him not another's but my own he knew for certain that is there is a redeemer and is there life after death is it possible yes here is the answer and again this is what he told martha and mary whose brother lazarus lay dead and he was in the grave for four days though the sister sent the message in the beginning itself jesus did not come purposely he came after four days when that body is already decaying in the grave and as soon as sisters saw jesus their master both of them told him the same question lord if you had been here my brother would have been alive today and now and jesus said even now he shall rise again for i am the resurrection and the life and he who believes in me shall never die though he be dead he shall rise again here is your answer again the answer came from the cross because jesus died and then rose again he defeated the power of death until then the devil was holding authority and control and the key of death but once jesus came out of the grave on the third day he declared to the world i was dead but behold i am alive and i am alive forever and ever and now i hold the keys of hell and death how did he get it he snatched the power and authority of death and the key of death from the devil's hand now jesus christ has the possession of the control and authority over death 
because he, by dying and then rising again from the dead, he defeated death's power over humanity. And now those who believe in Jesus Christ, that is the condition. If you believe and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life, He is my Savior and Redeemer, and I am acknowledging Him as my Lord and Savior, and you follow Him daily, and be faithful to Him until He comes and takes you, then you have victory over death. You are not that dying kind. You will be alive forever and ever. This is what Jesus promised in the gospel according to St. John chapter 14 verses 1 to 3. I am going to prepare a place for you, he said. And once I prepare it, I will return and take you so that you will be with me wherever I am forever and ever. There is a resurrection and there is a life beyond this life. And that is found and given only by the Lord Jesus Christ who defeated death by coming out of his grave and is alive forevermore. He is the eternal Son of God. And he is promising that if you and I will follow him faithfully and acknowledge him as Lord and Savior of our lives, hallelujah, you and I will be alive with him forever and ever. This is your answer to this question. If a man dies, will he live again? Yes, he will. And Jesus Christ is the only answer to this. So believe in him. Take him into your life. Follow him. Worship him. Serve him. And wait eagerly for the coming of the Lord to take you. This is your hope. And we live for this. We don't belong to this world. We belong to the kingdom of God, the eternal king. God bless you as you meditate on this and find the answers for yourself. You need a mediator between God and man because every sin we commit is a sin against God. And that is why Jesus Christ came to be your mediator and he died for your sin, and he rose again, and he's alive for, to save you. And then, the question is, I, the, 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 the question is, will, will I live if I die? You will, if you die in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you as you consider these questions. And uh, there is a mediator for you. And may the Lord bless you as you meditate on this. And do what you need to do. There is a reconciliation. There is a mediator. And there is life after death. And Jesus Christ is the only answer to these questions. God bless you as you seriously consider and share with others this good news. And have a good day today as you live and serve the Lord. God bless you.